The Kansas City Chiefs and San Francisco 49ers are set to face off in this Sunday's Super Bowl, and it's looking to be quite the matchup. At least when you look at the spread right now and ticket prices, both of those making it a marquee Super Bowl. And joining us now to break down expectations is NFL player, entrepreneur, and professor Brandon Copeland, who joins us yet again on Wi-Fi PM. Brandon, it's good to see you again. Uh, and obviously, I mean, as a starting linebacker for the New York Jets, I have to ask first... What are you expecting to see? Who's going to win? What's going to happen Super Bowl this year? That is a great question. I think uh, I really want to see the Chiefs win. Their offense is clearly uh, in a league of its own, so mm -hmm. to speak. But I think the 49ers actually have a more uh, balanced team, right, from a defensive standpoint and an offensive standpoint. So I think the 49ers are going to win. But ultimately, to be quite honest with you, I just want to see a great game. I just want to come down to the last possession um, so that I can, you know, enjoy the <laughs> yeah i think that's what i want too uh we got jack brewer here though former nfl players this is, i think the first time that we had two nfl players and nfl alums on the show y'all are getting smart yeah and I, <laughs> so i know something's working here but jack was just saying he he's gonna take the 49ers as well although i think i would take the chiefs yeah what's up brandon how's it going How you man, doing? man okay. god is good god is good yeah I, I was just telling zach you know the 49ers are a little bit different because they have the ability to control the line of scrimmage with four down linemen uh, they get to the quarterback every Sunday without ever having a blitz. And, you know, in a game like this, and you know how it is, uh, when you when you can put them in third and seven and third and eights uh, versus being in third and three, that's a big difference. And I think that's what you're going to see. Uh, they're going to be able to spy, uh, spy the quarterback, and that's what Mahomes, you know, really doesn't like is when you have the ability to do that. So I expect a big game out of Richard Sherman and those guys. But uh, I'm like you, Brandon. I hope it just comes down to the last possession and gives us something to, to watch. Well, that's what I'm saying, because even if you're not a football fan even if you have no skin in the game you know even if you're just there for the commercials and i'm not saying you are heidi but i'm just saying if you're just there it seems like the whole nation comes together because it's one of those rare times where all of us are experiencing the same thing at the same time and importantly as you pointed out brandon uh during the off season you teach a financial literary course called life 101 and you've partnered with capital one on a new financial wellness study called mind over money they found that 77% of people feel anxious about their personal finances. So, I mean, the Super Bowl, to me, could just constitute, could, could represent a chance for us to kind of put that aside, maybe just for a couple hours and focus on maybe the joy of just sports. But, I mean, was that number surprising to you, 77% of Americans constantly worried about finances? To be honest, no. I mean, I, that was one of the reasons why we partnered together, so they could uh, help put numbers and, and uh numbers and stats behind these thoughts right but you know going into the class i realized there's a lot of my peers a lot of my friends a lot of just people that we all know who are stressed out right and you know when you think about stress i think one of the leading causes of that is just not being where you want to be financially mm -hmm. right um and so again by being able to partner with capital one do this mind over money study we're able to put numbers to it and again 77 percent is a is a high number however there probably are a few people who did not uh admit to feeling anxious about it because again our society we all we always like to see seem like we have every answer uh to every problem as, as opposed to asking for help sometimes so yeah, and it depends, I guess, on what day you're asking, too, because I feel like some of those numbers might be even higher on the day after the Super Bowl. Uh, maybe more Americans might be saying that they can't actually focus at work, or they might feel fatigued because of other reasons. At least yeah, right. that's my experience. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> no, but Brandon, big, big uh, hats off to you, brother. I'm, I'm a little yeah. older than you. I'm 41, and to see a, a young guy like yourself doing that. Uh, it's it's a it's a really good thing, you know. I, I'm a professor at Fordham Gabelli School of Business, and you know I've been working for over 20 years, uh, getting brothers like us uh, with their head in the game, and it's about that education. And so for you to be doing it while you're in the locker room uh, is a big deal. So hats off for that, uh, and just keep on keep on pushing, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I think that uh, one of the things I'm trying to do is my my grandfather. Unfortunately, he passed away last January this time, but he was a former NFL player. He played 11 years in the league, um, had the opportunity to go to two Super Bowls, won one, uh, lost one against the Jets and Joe Namath in, the, in that uh, regard. But, you know, he made education in general cool to me, right? And so for me to be able to use my platform uh, to be able to go into high schools and, and go talk to people and, and make, you know, taking care of your money and budgeting and, and uh making strong or confident financial decisions cool, so to speak, 
um, I'm really just embodying what my grandfather did for myself. Um, ultimately, again, I'm, I'm teaching this at the University of Pennsylvania, but the reason why I started teaching this is to uh, make this assess- accessible to all, right? I want my my mother uh, to have had this knowledge when she was growing, you know, not growing, well, growing up, but also when she was coming up with two uh, two young boys who ate up everything in the household. So um, <laughs> another reason why, you know, uh, Capital One, they, they're they really big in the community and, yeah. and um, they're doing things to make this money coaching available to all for free, whether yeah. you're a customer or not. And that's why, you know, it's important to, so well, I mean, that. I mean, Brandon, you you may have ate up everything in the house, but at least you did something with it. Unlike some of us, who <laughs> ate up all the food and, and you know just sits on the couch for a living now, because that's basically what I do. But Brandon Copeland, thank you so much for joining us, friend of the show. Thank you again for joining us again.